Hello and welcome back. This is a past paper, paper two, and it's the final question, the 15 mark coding question from the May, June 2024 paper. And this is the version two paper from the 0478 computer science IGCSE and O level. So let's have a little look. Final coding question. What you've got to remember with these questions is they used to be the scenario question, but now this has changed. Um, they're worth 50 marks. Paper two, though, is like paper one, worth 75 marks. So this means that this question on its own is worth 20% of the um, of the paper. It is generally deemed the hardest task and the one that takes the longest time. It usually takes around about 30 minutes, or you should give yourself at least 30 minutes to complete this task. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we can do it, how we can break it down, the steps we need to take. Okay, so let's have a read. A one-player game uses the two-dimensional 2D array grid to store the location of a secret cell to be found by the player in 10 moves. Each row and column has five cells. You can see here five going across, five columns, yeah, and five rows. Okay, at the start of the game, the program places an X in a random cell, but not in the first cell, not in 1-1, one, one, and empties all the other cells in the grid. A little bit like the game Battleships. The player starts at the top left of the grid. Okay, starts here. Um, the player has 10 moves. Okay, during the game, the player moves either left, right, up or down um, by one cell and moves must be within the grid. We can't go outside the grid. So, for example, if we go here, we can't move up and we can't move left. Okay, you win and there's a message displayed. If the player moves to the cell with the X, for example, if the X is here, then and the player gets to it within 10 moves, then they've won. Okay, but if they don't get to the X within 10 moves, then they lose. A little bit like Hangman. Okay, so you're going to write a program or write some pseudocode that meets these requirements. You must use pseudocode or program code and add comments to explain how your code works. Um, you do not need to declare any arrays or variables. You may assume that this has already been done. All the inputs and the outputs must contain suitable messages. Okay, so, oh, 15 marks, looks quite daunting, let's have a look. So, we need to understand the problem first of all. So, I've read it to you, so what I hope you've gleaned from that is, um, the key things, what is given? Well, we've been given a 5x5 five five grid. We know that a random X um, will be placed in the grid, but not at this position. We know that the player 1, or whoever's playing, will start at this position, grid 1-1. One, one. And we know that that player has got a limit of 10 moves. We know that the player can move up and down and left and right, but they must stay within the grid boundaries. We know that it displays you win if the player finds the X um, less than or equal to 10 moves. And we know that it displays you lose if the player doesn't find the X in 10 moves. X cannot be placed in the position 1-1. One, one. That's a constraint. Players must not move outside the grid. Invalid moves should not count. Case sensitive input handling may be needed. Okay, so some kind of validation there in terms of um, what the person enters. So to initialize the game, um, the program will load, it will create a five by five grid. It will set all the cells to empty. It will randomly place an X, yeah, in any position apart from this one. It will put player one into this position, one, one. It will set our maximum moves to 10 and it will set a move counter to zero. So it knows that it's gonna be counting upwards every time it moves. It's gonna ask for user inputs, either left, right, up or down. And it's gonna check if these moves are valid, if inside the boundaries. It's going to update the position. If it's outside the boundaries, it's going to reject the move. It's going to check if the position reaches the X. And if yes, it's going to display a win message. And if no, it's going to continue until move count reaches 10. At the end of the game, if the player uses 10 moves and didn't find the X, it will display a lose message. Okay, so there's the three steps. So we've identified the inputs, left, right, up, down. We have identified the outputs, you win or you lose, and the processors, the random placement of the X, uh, movement validation, and move counting. Okay, so what does all this mean? We have a grid. We've placed the player at position 1-1. One, one. We've randomly placed an X in the grid. The player moves, maybe it moves down, moves um, right, 
moves down, moves right, moves right, and finally moves up, and a message appears, you win. So that's basically what is happening. This is what the game should be doing, okay? So what we can do with that is we can do some very, very simple, and you would get, if you did this, you would get marks for this. This is not generally, I've made some bits of it up, but this is basically an overview of what we've just said. So set up a grid and place X. So set up five by five grid. We're gonna begin and we're gonna end the pseudo code. Initialize player position. Place X at random position, not one one. Player starts at one one. Moves equals zero, so it has set a counter. Okay, while the moves is less than 10 and not found X, while the player's not found X, ask for move. Validate the move. If the move is valid, update the position. If on X, display you win and exit. Moves equals moves plus one, end the while loop. If moves equals equals 10, display you lose, end. So that's basic pseudo code with some pseudo code that makes sense and some that's completely made up. But this is basically what is happening. I've put it there as seven bullet points. There they are, has some very basic pseudo code. But we need to make this a little bit more valid. We'll pick up some marks, we won't pick up the 15 for doing that. So let's take this pseudo pseudo code and let's break it down into sort of a proper coding example. Again, still in pseudo code. I begin, yeah, same as before. But now I'm going to initialize the grid. Okay, so I'm going to do a for loop. Okay, so from row one to five, do, and then from column one to five, do, and then grid, row, grid, column. Basically, I'm emptying all the cells. So you can see here, I've set them all to zero. And then I'm going to end the for loop and end the outer for loop. So end the inner for loop, end the outer for loop. All I've done there is set up the grid and emptied all the squares. Okay. Then I'm going to place the X in a random position. Okay, so repeat until X row equals random one to five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not using zeros here. I'm just going to keep it simple. X column equals random one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, until X row is less than or more than one or X column grid X row X column equals X. So somewhere in this random grid, we've placed X, okay? I've put the string here. So finally, okay, player starts at position one, one. So player equals one, player column equals one, max moves equals 10, I'm setting all the variables here. Ma uh, move count equals zero, win equals false. Okay, so we've got Boolean there, we've got some numbers to, for, for the counting. Player is at one, one. Now, I'll zoom in a little bit on this. While moves is less than 10 and not found X, ask for the move. So we're gonna start the game loop and this is gonna be a big while loop. Everything's gonna contain within this while loop. Okay, so while the move count is less than max moves and not win, do move error equals false. Okay, so we're gonna set the move error to false. Output, you are at player row, player column, basically one, one, you are at, yeah, enter move left, right, up or down. Um, input player move. So the person inputs the move. Player move equals upper player move. We've set L-R-U-D to uppercase. I've done some naming conventions, I've done some validations, okay? So whatever somebody types in, it's gonna set that letter to uppercase using this. We're gonna determine the new position based on the move. Okay, so temp row equals player row, temp column equals column. And then because the exam board love it, I put, I'm gonna put a case statement in here. So this is basically sorting out my moves. So if, if a player presses L, the temp move will equal player column minus one. Okay, column moving this way, so moving this way. Okay, R is gonna move in the, in, from one column to the next column. Um, up is gonna move minus one, okay? And down is gonna move plus one, okay? Otherwise, move error becomes true, okay? So if somebody does not press any of these um, letters, then the move will be, um, the move error will be true. And then I'm gonna end that case statement, okay? 
So that just controls the moves a little bit better. It doesn't have to be a case statement, but I just thought I'll put it in because the exam board love a while loop, they love a for loop, and they love a case statement. Um, and certainly if you can get some decisions, some ifs, some else, some elifs as well, you've covered all the basics and that is enough. Okay, you don't necessarily have to define any functions um, with IGCSE. So we've got to validate these moves. If, so uh, must be within the grid boundaries. So if temp row is less than one or temp row is greater than five, then there's obviously going to be a move error. Okay, and same with the column. If it's less than one or greater than five, then there's a move error. That becomes true. Yep, so just to sort of go through that a bit more. If not a move error, so, so it's almost like I'm working backwards here, but so process of move if it's valid. If not a move error, then the player row equals the temp row that we set up. Okay, the player column equals the temp column, and then the move count equals the move count plus one, which when we're here is, as remember, is set to zero. Okay, but then it gets set, yeah, one additional uh, move. So what have we got so we're going to check if the player found the x so if grid player row player column equals x yeah then output congratulations you found x okay in however many moves i've gone a little bit beyond what is asked for but okay and output you win win becomes true we end the if statement we end um we end the if statement else output invalid move yeah stay within the grid End the if statement, end that particular while loop. You can see I'm here, look, I'm ending. This was my sort of little validation. If it's less than 10, yeah. We've just made it a little bit more robust, a little bit more formal. Okay, giving a little bit more detail to the pseudo code. So that's step six. Step seven, basically we've, we've finished. If moves equals equals 10, display you lose. So let's make this a little bit more formal. Yeah, if not win, then output game over you lose the x was at so it tells us where the x is we end the if statement okay and we end yeah and that's basically it that's all we needed to do so so let's just summarize this we provided a logical flow for the clear sequence the grid was set up the players movements were set up validation in terms of how the player can move and then a win and lose condition Okay, we sorted out the validation with the input to handling. We use as, we use uppercase for the player moves to ensure that whatever somebody types, it sets it to upper, uppercase. Um, we implemented a case statement for better movement validation. We did some boundary checking for the movement to prevent out of bounds move before updating the position. And then we passed a win or lose condition Basically, it checks if the player finds X within 10 moves and it displays you win or you lose appropriately. So that is it. If there's any questions, please ask. I've tried to keep it sort of short and sweet and showing you what you can get away with, but then sort of expanded that into a level of detail, which should get you full marks in terms of the final question on paper two. So good luck. Good luck with your exams. And I will speak to you very, very soon. Okay, bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.